Welcome back everybody to my JavaScript laboratory where coding is number one priority. Should have watched less YouTube videos, but you know, I watched a lot of them today. So anyways, welcome back to our JavaScript series. And today we're going to be learning one more fun and interesting stuff that you'll be using probably almost on all websites. Yes, the approach is going to be different, but this is all the useful stuff that you'll be using in your day-to-day -day life. And we will be working on some project later on as we'll be progressing in the series. So this is all about some of the functions that we can do. Now notice here one quick thing, then we'll be moving on to the next file. So if you just notice here, come back onto the file, notice there are a couple of ways to access everything here. If I just type simply like my to do's and I say dot, and then I want to access a day, I simply say day. This is how I access my properties, okay? And if I have to access my functions, I just say something like add meeting and add a pair of parentheses. Very, very big difference. When you access a property, you just mention that. When you access a function, you mention a pair of parentheses as well. Very, very subtle difference, but very important one. So let's just get rid of that. And we're gonna be moving on to new file to have a new example. So let's just open this intermediate. We're gonna create a new file. And this is gonna be simply says as uh, web, web check dot js. Okay. So the whole idea is to define a simple function, which can check for a username. And we want a username just like Gmail. So it should always contain some number. And we also want to check out a password. And we want to check out if password is not something simple like 1234. And uh, uh, probably in the username, there should be an add the rate sign as well and stuff like that and password should be maybe like more than six characters so a couple of things that we have to take here and in order to work with that we have to explore something so first and foremost let's just say we are going to be having a, a user a user email so that's going to be our first thing and we're going to be calling it as simply let okay so there we go, we have a user email and that's gonna be something like at the end, always we're gonna be adding like at the rate gmail.com or at the rate lco.com, that's also fun. So somebody has given us a username for that and let's just call this as uh, lco and uh, lco12, okay? So later on we'll be changing it to something like lco only, we should be getting an error if it's, it, it is just lco, if there is no character uh, word being included. That's one thing and then we have a password and the password is gonna be something like uh, we will be having a password like 1234 and it should not be allowed because it's really simple so we will not be allowing something like 123456 and also we will not be allowing anything which is less than six character. So there are a lot of things going on and how we can handle that. Luckily for us, it's all simple. So whenever you have defined a string, there are a lot of methods and properties that you can access with that string. For example, for any string, let's just say the password one, I can just access a lot of properties. As soon as I put a dot, you can see there's a list of things that can go on here. Yes, you can explore them directly here, but there is a better option. So directly it just says length. And if I just use a length, it's a simple thing. It's a property. It's not a method so that I don't have to give pair parentheses. This is just a property and it will give me length of the string, as simple as it sounds. So let's just save that, open up our terminal, and just fire this up. Oops, not here, come on. We will be, I think I'm at wrong place. Yes, I am. So we'll be going into 02, intermediate, and then clear the screen, node, and web check JS. So there we go, we got four, obviously one, two, three, four is four, okay. Now let me walk you through with something which a lot of you will disagree with me here, but only the people who will agree with me here are gonna be walking with the journey of becoming a programmer. As a programmer, it's your job and it's your duty and it should be something that you should like is reading the documentation. Now, whenever I mention this documentation part that, hey, read a little bit from the documentation, sometimes people get angry that, hey, why we are watching your series or why we are taking your uh, videos that if we had to look up into the documentation. Trust me, my dear friend, as your job as a programmer, most of your time you'll be spending in the documentation and less time in writing the code because you will be figuring out new things and it's not like everybody just remembers everything. We have to dig up into documentation. So believe it or not, like it or not, you will be there on the documentation page quite a lot. So let's go ahead there and we will be having a resource for the documentation. 
my favorite one is MDN. Mozilla guys, I know you're trying really hard for the Firefox, but one thing that you have absolutely done amazing is this resource, MDN. So JavaScript and we are gonna be walking through with the string and it should be the first link with MDN JavaScript and string link. I love you Mozilla guys, what the amazing resource you have put up. Nobody can even compete with this. So there we go, we have a lot of things here. Notice here one more thing. Now some things are saying as properties, let me zoom that. On the left hand side, there are two things, which is prototype and length. These are properties. The rest of the thing that we are seeing is methods. So you now are able to understand that why for some of them we are using pair of parentheses, for some we are not. So notice here, uh, one that we used, it's all alphabetically characterized. So the one that we use is the length. So that is actually top because it's a property. So we have used the length, but we have others as well. For example, one that you will be using quite a lot is like lowercase and uppercase and something like that. For example, let's go ahead, try that out. Let's just say something is trying to have an, a username like this. And obviously all caps means it's like screaming at us. We don't want to do that. So if I check something like this, if I just log values here, and if I just say user email, and I want to convert that into lowercase, so I'm gonna be simply saying dot lowercase, not this, to lowercase, there we go. Now important stuff is here, which everybody makes a mistake, is there is a capital L and there is a capital C, but no capital T. So this is something that you should be uh, playing focus here. And let's just run that again. And it just returns us a function to lowercase because we forgot to put a pair of parentheses. It's not a property, it's a, it's a method. So we have to run that again. And there we go, finally it's LCO123. So you got the point how we can use all of them. Like two overcase, just like this, there is a two uppercase as well. It's not a property, it's a method. So go ahead, run that. And if we just have something like this, uh, this is something like that, if I can type that correct, it's gonna convert that into yelling. This is something, all caps. Okay, there we go. Now, just like this, I want you to explore more stuff here and I want you to spend a little bit time with it. Don't spend like all of that, but you should be able to spend a little bit time. And it's pretty easy documentation. For example, if I click on lowercase to lowercase, it gives a syntax that you should have a string, then use this method. What is the return value? A new string represent the calling string converted to lowercase. So it just takes a string, gives back your string. And pretty simple stuff. Okay, so one thing that you will be using quite a lot is uh, is something in here, I can show you. There we go, trim. And let's open up the documentation. So what it does, uh, it takes a string, obviously, and a new string representing the calling string stripped off white spaces from both ends. I hope that's a pretty clear stuff. What we are trying to say in here is if there is a white space at the start or maybe at the bottom or maybe at the both, if you use a method that is trim uh, instead of this, uh, then it's gonna just remove all those spaces and gonna give you back a really clean string. This is something. Very useful when we take input from the user in the forms, which we'll be learning later on. Okay, so enough of the theoretical basics. We have learned quite a lot and now we are ready to define our function, what we want to do. So uh, we are gonna be defining this function. So let's call it as user checker and that is gonna be equal to function, there we go. And it takes a parameter and it takes a my string, whatever that is. So it takes a string parameter and you have to check certain kinds of things with the string. Let's just assume we are gonna be giving something like, uh, we don't have to put a quotes there, it's just automatically a string. So what we have to do is we have to check a few things and we'll be returning true and false based on that. So we're gonna be using if and else statement. So we're gonna be saying something like this, that um, first and foremost, in the user email, I want uh, I want some numbers. So if uh, my string dot, and there is a good method here which says uh, includes, come on, includes, and let me show you what it does. It's always good to recommend these things again and again. There's no shame in that, that if you're, if you're recommending the documentation. So what even I'm looking for, there we go, includes. So there we go. 
And what you can do is you can pass on a search string, whatever you are looking for to be searched up, okay? So let's just say we are saying that, hey, there should be a number now in order to have a specific number we have to pass on something known as a regular expression but i don't want to go into the regular expression right now in detail so we'll be looking forward that if we are using an include here we are just looking for one two and three specifically so these should be there exactly in same order if we want any number from zero to nine to be present in a string we have to use something known as regular expression don't worry it will come up later on right now we are literally looking for it okay and we can use our and signs in here and we can simply say something like this and uh, one more condition needs to be fulfilled and i think we need a pair of parentheses here and here and then we can use end and we can simply say my string uh, and we will be looking for the length and uh, it should be greater than probably six or whatever you like to have now, if this condition is true, if it includes one to three, and if it includes a simple length, uh, which is more than six, we are going to simply return, return a probably a true. And in the else case, we are going to be returning false. So there we go. Else return false. And we don't need to actually use the else case in here. It's not compulsory. You can just directly return else case because only one true one return statement works in the function. As soon as it sees a return and it just returns anything back, that's it. The function is not going to run anymore. So this part in here is completely optional. If you think that, hey, I get confused with that, that's totally fine. But in case you want to write something like this, uh, that is also totally fine. Totally, absolutely fine. Only one of them is going to get returned. Okay, so obviously if we have something like this, uh, let me just remove that. We have something like ABC, uh, we should get a false. So let's just check it and we're gonna be logging it. So let's just log this and we are gonna be running this user checker and we will be passing on this user email here. And let's run this and see what is going to happen. So there we go, we get a false. So you get an idea that how it works. And if it says one, two, three, uh, and then something like ABC, it just automatically looks for including one, two, three at any position. We don't have to worry about it. Run that again, we get a true, okay? So one thing is solved. Surely we'll be later on learning the things that how we can have something which can search for any numbers using uh, your simply regular expression. I have a small series on regular expression on my YouTube channel. Go ahead, check that out. And let's define one more function for the password. Okay, so let's just remove this guy. And let's pass checker. There we go. Not like that. And we are going to be creating a function. And the function should have a body. It is going to be expecting a pass or password. And now it depends how complex you want to have password. You can have variety of methods to be checked on. So let's just say we're gonna go on to the if and else condition. Now in here, the if and else conditions, it's totally depend how you want to include and all those stuffs. Or basically we can just copy and paste all of this and can be a little bit lazy like that. So it's gonna look for, uh, in here I have to change this pass. This is gonna check as pass. So it should include something like uh, one to three, or maybe you want to have a little bit stricter. So it should include something like one to three, uh, probably an at the rate on exclamatory sign should also be there. Uh, however, you want to go ahead and look for that. And for that, obviously I have to use this string here. Probably you want somebody to have like, um, it should not include like something, some strings that you want to have, like it should not include username. However you want to get that, you get the idea. So let's just say I want somebody to include in all of their password like a number, uh, one, two, three, four. And the password should be really strong, so it should be greater than eight. Then only we are gonna return and allow that. So you got the point that how we can actually work with the strings, how powerful they can be, and how these methods are defined. And there are a lot of if and else conditions and checker on these usernames and password and don't, then only we are able to proceed into login in or signing up or choosing a username. So this is all happening when you select your username for Gmail or anything else. Okay, so I hope it was pretty informative for you. 
you enjoyed it as well and make sure there is no hesitation there should be no hesitation to check out all these things uh, like ends with concatenate there are some useful functions that you should definitely look up for and should spend a little bit time in reading documentation they are not much you don't have to memorize but spend a little bit time so uh, that's it that was some fun with the web basics which we will be using later on when we will be designing our own functions for these passwords and stuff so that's it for this video uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button on my channel and i'm going to surely catch you up in the next one